Uh, the larger story here is about the rise of the cooperative. Uh, we live in a new world order that's gone from competition to frenemies in co-opetition to cooperatives. The tumultuous roots of co-ops actually live in this market in the US. In 2008, the New York Times, the Tribune Company, Hearst, and Gannett came together to pool inventory resources and look at the programmatic selling opportunity together in a venture called Quadrant One. In fact, in 2011, Quadrant One CEO at the time, Mario Diaz, who's now a very successful executive in the Gannett family, um, was very hopeful. They had just done one of their very early private ad exchanges uh, run by AdMeld, which was subsequently bought by Google. But according to both first-hand and second-hand reports, Quadrant One was the victim of infighting and channel conflict and other things. And that effort was shut down in 2013. And a lot of people in this market took that as a problematic sign for cooperatives generally. Actually, the roots of successful cooperatives lie in Europe. And you have to go back to 2012 when Laplace Media was formed in France. Uh, run by a former Rubicon Project executive, uh, it is comprised of over 20 major media owners in that market and is the model by which many other cooperatives since then have been formed. Uh, in 2013, we saw the Czech Publisher Exchange come together in that market, also the Danish Publisher Exchange. See a lot of progressive opportunity up in Scandinavia. And more recently, cooperatives in Greece and in Italy. Italy is a market that was uh, on a slow roll with regards to automation and programmatic. Uh, and because of the G5, it's uh, the, literally the five biggest media owners in Italy all came together for this cooperative. Uh, they took a, a, a seat on the main stage in Europe very, very quickly. So the question to ask is why? Why is this happening? And why now? Why is this all happening now? The leading publishers in these markets face an existential threat. That threat is from Google and Facebook, companies that have no history, no local brand, no local expertise, not in France, not in Denmark, not in Italy, but they have massive, massive scale. And overnight, they have represented serious competitions to these media brands that have been in these markets for the duration. The co-ops represent an opportunity to answer not just the quality message, but quality at scale, something that used to be an oxymoron. And Laplace, the first one that I mentioned, that started just three years ago, now has more than 250 sites in the cooperative and reaches 80% of the population in France. Now Pangea. I don't know if you know the reference, but Pangea is a supercontinent that was formed during the late Paleozoic period when the continents were, came together, and it lasted 100 million years. So Pangea is a little bit different than the other cooperatives we've seen, in that it's composed of global news brands, Guardian, FT, Reuters, CNN, and The Economist. And what's common among many of these is, although they may have a single home country, their footprint and their consumption is truly, truly global. And we've already seen the individual brands use automation to their advantage as they enter and commit to different markets around the world. 
Automation allows for easy, fast entry into the market where markets that may have been underserved from a selling perspective, we've seen many of these companies, they'll drop in sales and service, and because of automation, um, they're off to the races. So Pangea is the next logical step for these brands to come together. Quality and scale, that used to be an oxymoron. Today it's not. Pangea, as you're going to hear, is a global platform with 110 million monthly uniques. 